Good morning. You listen to FloridaDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Don Finkel, who is CEO of Shaw's Hardwood Business. Don, how you doing? I'm doing good, Kemp. How are you? I'm good. Good to be with you. I wanted to talk to you about this Gibson guitar, the fact they're going to pay a fine. But first, before we get into that, let me just ask you, since you're a leader in the flooring industry in the hardwood area, how are business conditions right now? I'd say, you know, they're hanging in there. Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, say they're wonderful, but they're, I guess, solid. Would love to see the recession end. That's right. Boy, I wonder if it will. You know, they talk about the new normal. Seems like every year we get you know, excited. People start talking about you know potential for 7 to 8% growth, and we get a burst of energy in the first quarter, and then the second quarter fizzles out on us, and it looks like that's happened again. So things, I guess things are running about flat is what I'm hearing. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, you see some some things are, are a little better, some things are a little worse. I mm-hmm. mean, all of it is, it's a lot of effort to keep the nose up. I guess in, until housing kicks back in, it's just going to probably be like this for a while, isn't it? Yeah, I think you've got, you know, the job situation, uh, which still, you know, is uh, not creating, the economy's not creating enough jobs to make people feel confident. We are seeing some foreclosures get out of the marketplace, but still have a lot more to go. And, of course, that just depresses home prices. And until those foreclosures are out of the marketplace as comparables, I don't think anybody's going to be excited about, you know, building a new house or selling the house they've got. Right. We've been watching the Case-Shiller Index, which is, you know, tracks the value of homes. And it does seem that it's leveled out. We just need to start it start go back up some. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think it's significant. Even if um, you don't see things really rising, if they're just not going down anymore, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a that's a good point to to finally get to. All right. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, one of the reasons I want to talk to you about it is you've been seen as the driver of this whole Lacey Act legislation. It's a noble effort, well justified. The the intent here was to make sure that all these exotic species that are in all these countries couldn't be illegally brought into this country and that there was some custody or some paperwork that shows that the wood you bring into the U.S. has been logged legally, right? Right, a declaration, Mm -hmm. which you have to file when you import a product. And you have to say what the wood is, what the value is, what the quantity is, and where it came from. And not to get into too long a conversation about Gibson Guitar, since it's not a flooring company, but I guess they're the poster child for breaking this law. And the news yesterday was that they've gone ahead and agreed to pay $300,000 plus, I think, $50,000 toward some fish and game type of deal. And so they're probably not admitting anything wrong, but saying that, you know, we want to pay a fine and, and get this to go away, right? No, I think they are admitting that they're wrong. Uh, If you read into the press release that was put out by the Department of Justice, Mm -hmm. they go into great detail about the the, uh, Gibson employee going to a conference in Madagascar, Mm -hmm. being told that all the wood in the warehouse was illegally harvested in violation of the Madagascar law. He went back and uh, reported that information to higher-ups, and then they proceeded to have four more shipments come in after that fact. So I, I don't think that it's uh, – I think they are admitting guilt, and I think that's a, a pretty significant part of it because, you know, up to this point, you know, what's been said publicly was, was quite different. And this wood that they were bringing in is a rosewood and ebony from India, and I guess it makes the guitar sound better, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess there's something unique about those particular species. Um, I don't know much about music. It does apparently have some kind of properties that give it a, a, a sound that people appreciate. Well, one thing I want to point out, because I am here in Chattanooga, this is where Floor Focus is headquartered, we we heard a lot about some state-level legislators who were saying that the whole Lacey Act was taking away jobs, it was not good legislation, and actually tried to reverse it and were not successful, right? Well, they had two um, amendments to the Lacey Act. One was called the Relief Act, mm-hmm. and the other was the Focus Act. The Focus Act was more damaging to Lacey than the Relief Act, but both of them would have essentially eviscerated Lacey. Lacey has still a lot of complexity around it that people are trying to uh, to deal with if you're importing you know, wood from overseas. Mm-hmm. It's unclear or has been somewhat unclear exactly what you need to do to comply with Lacey. And so... Uh, the Relief Act and the, and the Focus Act, they wanted to change the penalties. They wanted to uh, to make them like a $250 fine. Yeah. So instead of this $350,000 settlement that Gibson made with Justice plus a forfeiture of about $262,000 worth of, of material, instead of that amount of money, 
which you know is somewhere north of six hundred thousand dollars, it would have been a two hundred and fifty dollar fine, okay. which is quite different. And that, that legislation was pushed by uh, Gibson's local Congress people, a Republican and a Democrat. And, you know, it was picked up by the Tea Party, mostly because it was portrayed as Gestapo-like government tactics, agents kicking in the door of your business and dragging your employees into the street, into the parking lot, (laughs) and seizing all your millions of dollars worth of material. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that was a little bit of a dramatization, but still, you know, nobody in the United States that's in business likes to think of that happening to them. So in the end, just as a quick summarize, I guess justice prevails because Gibson can still buy this exotic wood. They just have to make sure it was logged legally, right? Yeah, you have different situations out there, you know, in, in the world forest. Mm-hmm. These particular species, rosewood and ebony, are under quite a bit of pressure. There's, they're, they're somewhat rare. They're very slow growing. There is legitimate concern that they're going to be, you know, completely logged out to where there's just there's not any of it commercially available for generations because it's so slow growing. So there is an effort to protect those species. You know, there there still are other species which are commercially more important to the to the flooring business mm-hmm. in areas of the world where maybe it's not an endangered species, but it's a species that is part of the natural forest cover affects, you know, wildlife and it affects the local economy mm-hmm. of, the, of the places where it's harvested. And then it uh, is also damaging to any legitimate manufacturer that's that's paying a fair price for their material because it creates an economic unlevel playing field. If, you know, some companies are trading in wood where you don't have to pay a fair price for the material. Well, like I said at the beginning of this interview, this whole Lacey Act, I think you helped drive, and it really is a noble effort to make sure that the manufacturers in this country comply with foreign laws on how uh, products are are exported to this country, right? Right. I have been involved, but a lot of other people have been involved, too. The National Wood Flooring Association and the Hardwood Federation, you have uh, lots of environmental groups which, you know, are supporting it all for maybe little, some different reasons, but they also have overlap. And there's actually been a fairly strong coalition form now between uh, some of the uh, the hardwood business groups and some of the uh, environmental groups in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at this point, there hasn't been a flooring company that's that's violated the law that we know of. Well, I mean, there's not not been anybody charged. Okay. I, hear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to say that nobody's violated it. There's certainly nobody that, to my knowledge, has been charged. Okay. Don, well, I appreciate you giving us an update on this. Again, we've been talking to Don Finkel who is former president of Anderson Hardwood and now CEO of Shaw's Hardwood Business. And you've been listening to Kemphar and FloorDaily.net.